Welcome to the Cow Guy Close. I'm Scott Shelley, otherwise known as the Cow Guy. Thanks for joining us today. Well, with the markets experiencing some record moves, what is the average investor to do? With respected economists predicting anywhere between, say, zero and eight interest rate hikes is just a reflection. Is this just a reflection of the uncertainty out there, or is there something bigger at play here? Uh, my next guest has a map to that success. Uh, please welcome to the show Keith Fitzgerald. Thanks for joining the show, Keith. Really appreciate you being on. All right. Um, today, not unlike yesterday, we've seen some wild swings in that equity market. <sighs> and I know that uh, we've got people on both sides of the aisle that want to say that we deserve to have eight interest rate hikes or some folks out there saying zero. Um, is this a buying opportunity? Are we, are we, are we still on the buy the dip? Or are we in the sell the rally mode here? What, what's, what's happening? You know, I think it's a little bit of both. Quality is going to matter, just like anything else in the world today. You get what you pay for. So if you're dealing with stocks on the fringe, Scott, chances are you're going to get shellacked. You're going to get a buzz cut you didn't sign up for, a white knuckle ride you didn't volunteer to take, you know, whatever expression you want to use. But if you stick with the quality, the pain that you're going to feel when the Fed finally does make its move is going to be bearable because you know lined up with a great company. So I don't think we're done with this. This kind of volatility, these sharp daily rebounds are usually more consistent with a broader sell-off than they are with the recovery. So I'm increasingly in the camp of, you know, invest with one foot in the exit. I, I agree because, you know, I was just talking to somebody else about it earlier today, and this is going to show my age, but back in 87, if you look at some of the price action, you, you sometimes went home with the feeling like, oh, we got rescued today, the market came back. Um, it's kind of feeling like that way to me now that everybody's getting a little bit more comfortable. Hey, this is coming back. That We might be in, you know, the lows. I, I've even heard it today. The lows might be in. I'm, I'm concerned because I think that the, one of the big reasons why we're seeing this volatility is, and I don't think the Fed can do it, but I think the market's worried about the Fed being able to thread the needle and surgically remove inflation without killing the patient, which would be the economy. What do you think about that? You know, I would go with that because, like you, I am old enough to remember 1987, the market conditions at that time. I, too, share that kind of thought. Strikes me as a lot like right now. They're taking blood out of your left arm and putting it in your right arm. The right. Fed is just, they are so far out to lunch, they're an insult to people that are actually out to lunch. So I don't think I want to focus on what they have to say. What I do want to focus on is what people like Jamie Dimon have to say, what people like Tim Cook have to say, because they're the folks who are building the world that we live in, whether we like it or not, what the Fed's doing is almost moot at this point. The Ukrainian situation is also a big concern of mine because I think the markets are going to have a knee-jerk reaction, and I sure hope that cooler minds are going to prevail. And, and you know, I, there's different types of reactions to different types of conflicts, but in this certain conflict, if we did have a knee-jerk reaction, where do you think that would be? You know, I think it's going to start just indiscriminately. The computers are going to kick in. But, you know, here's the thing, right, is if we get that and if the, the conflict stays localized, the markets, like they have at other points in history, even after Gulf One, Gulf Two, any of the other skirmishes or conflicts we've had around the world since, the markets will recover relatively quickly. So that's the that's the pause that you got to look for. It's like playing chicken, only somebody's holding the steering wheel out the window where the other guy can see it. Right. Now, take talk me down out of my tree here, OK? So... The Fed does its first hike soon. It maybe waits around, does another one. I mean, I believe that the Fed is always slow. They're going to wait and see, quote unquote. I've heard that a million times out of them. And, I, and my concern is, well, it's not my concern, but I, well, I guess it would be a concern because they might actually be right here because the, the market might slow the economy down with just being scared. The stock market really takes another 10 percent off. You've got a couple, three rate hikes in the bin. Things slow down dramatically, and all of a sudden, inflation's not the boogeyman anymore. They could accidentally be right, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I think you're being very gracious. I don't think they were accidentally <laughs> wrong. I mean, you know, it's, it's hard to maintain a modicum of respect for the Fed at this point in time. I mean, they're all smart. There's no question about that. But I think they're sadly misguided. They've sat in their ivory towers for too long. The transitarian Tory narrative is going to go down as one of the worst calls in history. What they need to do is get out and look at how the rest of America is feeling, what we're feeling in our wallets, what our lives are like. And then I think they'd have a very different perspective on the academic models they use, which I submit are terribly broken at this point. Yeah, you know, and it just reminds me of the old days, or you can watch a Vince Lombardi film, or I had a few football coaches that would tell me this, after they got done, you know, plotting the play up on the chalkboard with the X's and O's, you know, one of my best coaches would then turn to us and say, you oh, know, by the way, there's one big thing I've left out here. 
and that's when the ball gets snapped. The other guys move too, right? They're not <laughs> standing there waiting for you to hit them. And I think that the Fed has forgotten that when the ball gets snapped, the other guys move too, right? They think that these things are going to stay, you know, um, while well, we're going to continue to have the, the inflation the way that we, ha we have and then maybe have it come off. Well, no, things are, you know, things move, things happen. And I think that that's one of the big things that they miss is that sometimes they get caught up in the academia of the issue, right? The play looks good on paper. But when it comes to fruition in their market and out on the field, it doesn't quite work out that way. Well, and again, this is why I continually hammer on placing my bets with the right CEOs, the best CEOs the world has to offer, because those are the folks that are charged with turning a buck, with employing millions of people, with bringing home paychecks, sending home paychecks, with doing great things, and they have to do it profitably or they don't exist. Government doesn't understand that equation, never has, never will. So at times like this, if we look back through history, it's the great companies you want to go with because I'd rather own stocks that are under pressure if they're great stocks than stinky stocks that are under pressure right. and failing. And just to put a cap on that, you know, we've got some 33-year-old market experts out there that are managing a lot of money yep. that have really never seen a down market. I mean, that's, that's the world we live in today. And they haven't seen a lot of rate hikes either. So um, yep. it's going to be people like you that are going to be able to hold people's hands and then and walk them through this because obviously we both have 1987 memories. Uh, and so you've got all the other memories since then as well because we've had a lot of market action and a lot of market moves that have really kind of shook people. And here you are still today. So I really appreciate you being on the show. Thanks, Thanks for, for joining time, again. Scott. That's Keith Fitzgerald. I really, really appreciate it. Um, now, while we just got done talking about those markets, let's take a look at those equity markets to see where we're at at this moment in time. And remember, yesterday we were down big and came back big. We're trying to do that again today. Look at this Dow. We're only off 95 points, oh, about 100 points here, 104 at the moment, when it's, and it's making a comeback. Now, I, I don't want people to get too complacent because that can be dangerous. We still have that S&P down 47 points. That's looking more like it. Let's see what the uh, NASDAQ's doing. This one's getting hurt, 273 points lower. And this one, obviously, is the high-tech one, and it's getting hurt because of higher interest rates. And then lastly, this is going to be 27 points lower. And that Russell, that Russell is going to be something which is going to be the, the mid-caps, you know, the mom and pop. So uh, the market's still looking lower. Uh, the, the Dow trying to make a comeback, but everything else looking like it's uh, doing what it's supposed to be doing. All right, coming up, inflation from agriculture. Tommy Grisafi joins us to connect the dots back to the farm as President Biden claims ag companies are causing this inflation. But first, is the energy, uh, is the, energy the golden ticket? Bill Baruch joins us next to discuss how policy in this sector could solve a multitude of issues. Stay tuned to the Cal Guy Close. We'll be right back after this.